Hello, America. Welcome to Camping Corner, episode 12. And I don't know if you recognize this guy over here. He trimmed off some facial hair. This is Tony, by the way, guys. I got my summer dew going. It was 80 degrees yesterday. <laughs> Today it's 50, so I'm a little chilly, but yeah, I've got my summer dew going. You know, those of you that have luscious long locks, you get to change your hair color, your hairstyle. If you're a bald guy, you got like three options. You got nothing, a goatee, or a beard. That's it. That's all you got. This is true. This is true. Mutton chops. Well, that's well. Is that a beard? Is mutton chops a beard? I would say it's a variation of a beard. You know, mutton chops count like has to come from your <laughs> top of your hair. Alone. Yeah, and if you're bald on top, you can't really have mutton chops. That's just like sideburns. Grow you them, sideburns. Grow them long and comb them up. <laughs> <laughs> have like a part I'd have like an inch wide part right here and then I'd do it like up into a faux hawk <laughs> see you've got all kinds of options I, don't I even got options. lie I got options <laughs> yeah see how, what my wife thinks about that but oh my goodness so it's episode 12 yep and everybody is self distancing and quarantining and I'm relatively sure probably a little bit of grumping over campgrounds being closed for the next two weeks. But, hey, that's just a couple weeks, guys. I mean, yep. you know, we did six months of it while it was cold and you couldn't get out and doing anything. So, you know, right. hey, spend time with family. I mean, I, I guarantee there's some quality time. Mm-hmm. Um, I did see, I thought, and I thought this was funny, since your husband um, has been doing so much home remodeling work. Mm-hmm. So the crime rate is way down Mm -hmm. injuries due to power tools has skyrocketed through the quarantine my husband's not one of those but still early in our project no no, but but it just made me think about it because of all the stuff that you've got going on and (laughs) my wife keeps having me do some stuff too and i haven't heard anything yet still got all 10 fingers and 10 toes which is amazing (laughs) i haven't cut a toe off with a drill or anything well there you go that's It's a positive. It's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. When you drill a toe off, not cut a toe off. <laughs> well, it depends on how messed up you are. I mean, you could drill a toe off. Oh my goodness! <laughs> but, but our first segment, what's the buzz? All right, what's the buzz? So, our picture up here. What's this movie? You recognize the movie? It's one of the greatest movies of all yeah. time. Three hundred. Three hundred. Could you imagine what what Leonidas would say if he hit his shin on a on a trailer hitch? Probably the same thing we all say, just maybe a little bit more elegant. Most women would never hear it. They just see him standing there, like glistening, <laughs> sweaty, and blood. Oh, I wonder what he did. Yeah, he is pretty to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worse than getting your butt kicked by somebody that's just more attractive than you are. <laughs> but yeah, so. But hitting yourself, hitting your shin on the tow hitch, I have done that way many more times than I'd like to admit, especially because we have a boat. So if my husband takes the boat out, he leaves the hitch in, and then I'll go to the grocery store and loading the groceries into the back. And definitely so let, a few times. So hitting your shin on a, on the trailer hitch, you're like 5'2". So it's not so much my shin, more my thigh or hip. No, that's not where I was going, though, but stay with me. <laughs> So you're like 5'2". Have you ever bumped into the pin box on your fifth wheel? No. Mm-mm, like that. cutting under? No. Nope. Okay. I just wondered, you know, being that size, <laughs> you try to cut under and hit your head on that. Nope, haven't done that yet. <sighs> All right. Next one. What's your choice? A, B, C, or D? You know, I, I got to say, I've never seen D. I'm... I, I'm going to have to look it up and see if I can if, if I can find the long, long trailer. I don't think I've seen that one either. Pretty sure I haven't. Yeah, you know, obviously, our, you know, RV with Robin Williams, mm-hmm. classic. So many things for anybody that's been around RVs for a long period of time. The dump in the holding tank scene, not quite as classic <laughs> as the poopers full of Clark, but it, it's classic. It, it is. Meet the Millers. Or we're the Millers. Millers. That's hysterical in itself. And then Christmas vacation just falls into so many different categories of your favorite. Right. I mean, that's a favorite holiday movie, not just camper movie. 
That's a tough choice. It, it's tough. And I'm going to go out on a limb. I haven't seen the long, long trailer. I'm going to try to watch it while we're quarantined and, and see it. And then, you know, I'll challenge everybody. If you've never seen it, watch it. And then over the next couple episodes, let's discuss segments of each one of those. Let's get you guys involved. Send us some things that you think's funny about yeah. those movies. And let's let's have an open discussion about four of the greatest camping movies of all time. Yes. No, that's a good idea. I like it. Did you happen to see the monstrosity of luxury? The travel trailer? The tra- That's not... I, that, I don't even know what you consider that, though. Like... It's way more than a destination trailer or a travel trailer. <laughs> it's, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. But I clearly don't, there's slides. There, yeah. When your living room is that big, the... I mean, look at... The, just look at the size of that living room. Right. Yeah. And then the awning's like this big. So apparently you're going to spend all of your time inside. But if this was your trailer, would would you? Not, I'd be inside. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that's way. That's way too much. My it's wife. Nice would, in my house. It's it's just it's just out of control. The shower, the shower is definitely that shower with the glass <laughs> is definitely nicer than the shower that's that's in my house. Yep. No nope, I do love the television though. You can have half the people in the campground if you weren't social distancing. Right. Right there. That's a big television. The bunk beds, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. And then that, what's the deal with the, what's, why this little hassock, that little footrest? You got, you got enough seating surface for 29 people, but only somebody with a size four shoe can put their feet on the hassock. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, my short little legs wouldn't reach it anyway. (laughs) (laughs) So which would you choose? You ask about the movies, Mm -hmm. A, B, C, or D? Oh, goodness. This is like last week. They're so... I don't know. C looks kind of fun. I want to know how B works. Does B actually come down? Because otherwise, you're not going under anything. Right. That you would hit, you would hit everything. And do the the, the slides on the side do the, that are by the door? Do those go in? The, yeah, I, yeah. I don't I don't know how that whole thing works. <laughs> it's a puzzle. It's like a, a jigsaw. A jigsaw puzzle. The, the funny thing is, by the time you get it all put together, it's time to check out of the campground and go home. <laughs> <laughs> or have you did, have you ever seen? Because you don't have. Well, I don't know. The Lorax, the new. The one they came out with, I don't know, maybe like five or six years ago. There's a scene in that movie where the mom comes and she pops open her camper. And it's like this extravagant scene of popping out the camper. Like everything's coming from every which way. That would probably be B. Be my guess. C would be super cool if it had like some psychedelic Ooh, peace, like a, love, and chicken grease. Like a cool paint job on there. Yeah, to... it'd be super cool. And then D, of course, you got, boy, look at that right there. That's the greatest <laughs> thing ever. When you can, can combine monster trucks and camping. It's a win. That is a win-win situation right yes. there. And the same thing with the kind of class C over the... the motorcycle trike i mean right that's super cool too right you know, i guess you would have to have i would say i would have to have three of the four i'm out on b i don't understand that that looks way too complicated <laughs> but a c and d i yeah. could rock i could rock any of those i just see so long it'd be interesting where you're gonna park that thing right next to that big fancy one that we were looking at. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. It won't look as nice next to that one. Oh, goodness. All right. National parks. 
I can honestly say I have not been to any of these national parks. I've been to Yosemite, but I was little. Yeah. So I don't remember much about it. But Zion National Park, Yosemite National Park, Grand Teton National Park, Glacier National Park, all of which would be absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see any of them. Dan, have you been to any of them? I have not. We were supposed to go to A last year or the year before, but we didn't make it. I think we're going to try that next year. And then we had a friend who went to Glacier National Park two years ago and then went back last year because they loved it so much that okay. they said it's beautiful. I think one of the keys on that one is to think about <coughs> your couples coaches or your smaller coaches with no slides okay. to be able to get in and out of the campground and actually stay up there. But I agree with you guys, all of the above would be amazing to go to. And I bet a lot of people that watch us have been to probably at least one of these. What are your pictures? Yeah, send us some pictures if you guys have been to that stuff. Because, you know, obviously these are advertise, either advertising pictures that they send, yeah. that they, they post out Let's there. See. So they're the most beautiful pictures you can possibly find. So, you know, if you got, don't, don't send us the crummy pictures of like, you know, trash cans flipped over. We understand that that stuff happens. But if you've got some pictures of your family and, and your coach and things like that in some of these places. Yeah. Just put it in the comments. Let us know how it was, so on like that. Or like Dan's advice of campers that could fit into one of the parks. What's your advice if you've been to them? Yep. What yeah. should you go see? Will your camper fit? It would just be interesting to know. That, that would be super cool. All right. So next we've got Around the Web. Lots of good stuff in Around the Web. Absolutely. Obviously, everybody's, we're all inundated with bad stuff, bad news, scary things, so on like that, but absolutely some amazing things. You'll see a link to a Facebook group called RVs for MDs, mm -hmm. which is absolutely super cool. Yeah, so this link is allows you to connect with any healthcare worker looking for an RV. They could be looking to put them just in their driveway to quarantine themselves from their family so that when they get off work, they're not having to go in their houses and possibly infect their family absolutely and one of the amazing things one of our our clients one of the dealerships clients was on the news i don't know if you saw the video of this mm -hmm. but it's absolutely super cool let's show everybody the video check this out check guys. it out this rv is pretty much brand new it has two tvs a kitchen a bathroom complete with a shower and it sleeps up to nine people but for now this home on wheels is the place where one person will sleep the scary part is coming home from work. Elizabeth Coelia de Lima is a nurse at IU North, and she's a mother of two boys, a two-year-old and a two-month-old. I have been on maternity leave, so coming back in the middle of this pandemic has been uh, nerve-wracking to say the least. When she's at work, she's wearing her mask. When she's at home, she's wearing it too, constantly worried about getting her family sick. It's a lot. <laughs> Social media and a couple strangers stepped in. RVs for MDs fighting the coronavirus is a Facebook page that connects healthcare workers to nearby RV owners. Why not? It's just sitting there and somebody could be using it and keeping their family healthy and safe. Stephanie and Adam Raper came across the page. They posted pictures of their RV and knew it could help someone who is working on the front lines to keep us safe. It gave her peace of mind. The rapers got their RV out of storage, drove it to Elizabeth's home, and parked it in the driveway. Close enough that she's able to see her family, but far enough away to keep everyone healthy. It makes sense. We're, we're all in this together, and we're all just one day at a time trying to figure this out. There were thank yous and keys exchanged on Sunday. That was the first time they all met. And it was the first time in a while Michelle didn't sleep with a mask on. Instead, she hung it up and was reminded, people really do care it says a lot about our hearts and generosity right now all right super cool absolutely amazing that people are getting involved yes as a dealership yes we have started to get involved as a dealership too so we had two of our travel trailers delivered to henry community health here in newcastle for the healthcare staff so they can use it for just some rest and relaxation between patients and um, just kind of a nice little area for them to take a break. Take a nap, get out of the front line. That's right. By the way, big shout out to everybody on the on the front line, healthcare professionals. We know we have a lot of clients 
uh, as a dealership. And, and you, you guys know if you watch every episode, we don't spend much time talking about us as a dealership. But right now, we feel very blessed at our clientele that uh, work in the medical field or police and firefighters, EMTs, people that work on the front line. Absolutely big shout out, I know for me personally, uh, I don't really want to speak for Mallory, but I, she's probably going to agree. Yes, definitely. But uh, just a big shout out to everybody on the front line trying to make sure everybody's happy, healthy, and safe. So yes. we really appreciate that, guys. I'm happy that we can help take care of some of those people. Gadget Corner. So this is a good one to talk about with social distancing. Absolutely. We are going to talk about generators a little bit more. Um, people when they boondock, mm -hmm. obviously. Obviously, when you think of generator, you think toy hauler, right? It's most people that have a toy hauler want a generator, but you can use these for any camper if you want to boondock. Yeah, and I, I think boondocking the last couple of years has really started to gain a little more traction again with people that want to do kayaking and mm -hmm. mountain biking and healthy stuff that <laughs> they want to do. Um, we, as a dealership, we carry the Onan series which mm -hmm. are super quiet obviously Onan is synonymous with the RV industry they've been around and been the the generator provider for many many years in the RV industry from motorhomes to, to, to your towable units toy haulers fifth wheels things like that but now we have the capability of getting them in the portable side mm -hmm. so just anybody can use so super cool plus you get a massive RV network uh, along with that right yeah you know, in a future episode, why don't we spend a little time doing some research about places that you can boondock? And since everybody is learning a little bit more about social distancing and getting out and away from everybody, let's do that in an upcoming episode. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. What's your thoughts, everybody? So in industry news, there's been a lot of talk lately that the with a lot of the factories closed and things like that, mm -hmm. did you realize that millennials have now overtaken baby boomers as the largest living segment of the population. That's crazy, isn't it? It's absolutely crazy. And they camp. Mm -hmm, they do. So yeah, millennials are only 31% of the total population. However, they make up 38% of those that are camping. So it's, I mean, you see them a lot. Um, just wanting to get out more with their families. Millennials are valuing vacations as a way of life. Um, that's a necessity. And I think the big portion of it is to kind of break away, right, from, you know, social media. A lot of things that control our lives sure. now. So they're seeing that to break away, get their kids back into nature. And I don't know if you can speak to this as well, but I know I've had people where they may not even have kids yet. They're millennials. They don't have kids yet. But they're buying those bunkhouse coaches preparing right. for when they do have kids, yeah. getting them out in nature. So yeah. it's pretty cool. And we're also seeing an influx of smaller couple coaches, mm -hmm. you know, just for two people, but br much brighter, lighter weight, mm -hmm. much more modern. You know, so many years, for so many years in so many different industries, everything has been so slow mm -hmm. to make an adjustment from for the population. Mm -hmm. You know, they change to get things in the right place for the for the right people and one of the things that's absolutely amazing is the rv industry now is being capable of making those changes you know model year to model year to to put in place the right things for the right people to make sure that they're coming in because the reality is those young millennial families that don't have kids yet chances are when they do have kids, their kids are going to grow up and they're going to camp as well. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a constant influx of campers into the industry, but it's amazing that the RV industry is able to change so quick and yes. make the changes that need to be made. Yes. It's awesome. So yeah, I mean, it's great to see a lot more people getting out and enjoying nature. Not, I mean, it's, it's across the board, but millennials are definitely making up a big part of it. So just imagine in the next couple weeks, when the stay-at-home orders are, are broken, just think everybody's going to be out. That's, that's, <laughs> you know, people people that haven't left their house, what's the disorder where people are afraid to leave their house? Ooh, I don't know. I don't if know if somebody works. knows what that disorder is, because we're not going to look it up right now, but throw that in the comments. But, you know, there are people that have this thing where they won't leave their house. They'll be out of their house going someplace soon. 
Because even they'll be stir crazy. <laughs> they'll be stir crazy. <laughs> it's no fun when everybody else is in the house, too. Right. But anyway. All right. I think, are we, are we at the end? It looks like it. Oh, the sad time where we have to end the show. Agoraphobia. Agoraphobia. That would come from Sarah, our technology expert, our <laughs> research expert, who's married to Dan, our producer, who's also our hand model and just general pain in the tail. But you know, with social distancing, you don't get to enjoy his hand modeling right now. Uh, yeah, he can't. He's not allowed to hand us anything. No, no. He has questionable decision-making skills. <laughs> But we love him regardless. Anyway, guys, I think yep. that's it. Join us next week for episode 13. More fantastic news. Yeah. I won't have a different hairstyle next week. You really threw me off this morning. but Mallory but didn't recognize me I when didn't. she came in the door. It didn't. It took me a minute. So, <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you all next week. See ya.